big thanks to Vedran Oreshkovic from Croatia who helped me a lot uh, about tying of this fly and he provided me with his uh, photos of uh, fish and rivers where he uses Hello this fly. So in today's video I'm going to talk about these fish, this river and I guess you probably wonder uh, what fly did these people use to catch these magnificent trouts. Well, it's called Garbica fly, meaning it's hump fly or hump nymph because of the hump it has on the on the back that's what garba means and uh, it's very simple fly it's uh, supposed to be fished very shallow often to the fish that you can see so sight fishing cannot be much better than that uh, first it was invented by Pava Jurkovic for fishing on Gatska river that's very kind of slow river it's like those chalk streams in England but much larger and definitely one of the prettiest river ever uh, so fish there they have time to, to see your nymph they have time to see any flaws that it has and so on so that's why this man invented this fly but Toma Ladisic kind of improved it and changed a couple of things so he added he, he is using dubbing by it for the cover of the back and wings uh, boars bristles for the tail but I'm not using those now I'm using rooster barbs and so on so let's get into materials and into tying of this line and I will explain everything as we go because this is one of the flies that that is definitely worth having so for for Grbica Gr Gr fly I will use hook 900 BL Tiemco in size 16 it's just most convenient for me to use it like so uh, the reason why I'm using this hook uh, I know it's a dry fly hook, but it's also a very strong hook, at least according to my experience. Uh, I like it because it has slightly longer shank. It's classic shank, it's not short as uh, most of today's, uh, well, not classic, but they, they, they call themselves classic, but most today's modern barbless hooks are a little bit shorter in shank and wider in gap. Uh, this one will give me a bit more slender profile, elongated impression of the nymph, and the light hook for dry fly will actually help fl uh, fly be suspended just under the surface. Next thing we need is thin thread. And my choice in this moment is Semperfly Nano Silk in 18 knot or 30 denier. Uh, this is olive, just to match the color of the insect, but it's not important. You can use white and color it uh, afterwards. Uh, next thing that we are going to use uh, is tail and for the tail I chose this little uh, soft hackle uh, it's uh, from a hand that I collected before on the street literally from a from a salesman and I prepared the skin for my needs then uh, we are going to use biot in mahogany brown as you can see here uh, I'm going to use it for the wing uh, case cover and I'm going to use it for the body cover to rip the fly I will use Vivas uh, yellow, I will wax it and for that purpose I use pure bees wax, it's over here, just a little piece of wax and I run my thread through it. Uh, and then we come to the dubbing. As you can see this is Davy Watton's SLF, uh, synthetic living fiber and some squirrel inside, it's squirrel dubbing. In some of these places it's not that dubbing anymore because this is very old. A dispenser but for this purpose I will use the Davies uh, this one is let me just see green olive and dark olive so two colors for the abdomen lighter one focus is off so for the abdomen I will use lighter one green olive and for the thorax I will use dark olive uh, this one has too much sheen to it because I added some UV calibatis and so on and so on uh, let's get into tying as I already mentioned, I'm going to use TMCO 900BL hook in size 16 because I'm using Semperfly Nano Silk. It's slippery. I'll just run it through the wax to make it less slippery so I can start my fly easier. You want to keep the fly relatively slim in profile and relatively long. So by keeping it slim, visually it will look longer on the hook. So I'll start somewhere where I want uh, thorax to begin. I'll start my fly over there with very tight turns 
I don't want it to unravel and I'll go back. The reason why I'm going back here is I'm, I'm creating kind of taper already. And by starting my materials just over here, I'll just level them down. So first material I will add is going to be thread vivus in yellow, but I will also run it through the wax. It makes it a bit stronger. It prevents uh, changing of color when it gets wet. So that's my reasoning behind it. And I will also counterspin my bobbin holder uh, to make thread jumps into my hands, catch everything more easily. And I'll catch everything on my far side or when you are looking at it, it's your near side. Feather for the tail, I'll just attach it right now as well. I don't need too many of those barbs, like three, four, five, whatever. Just keep them together like so. Let's see, the length, maximum length would be shank length, but I like just to eyeball it over here. More or less this is maybe two thirds of a shank length. Not too, not too long. Again, counter spin the bobbin holder. Not enough. Okay, a little bit more. Okay, soft wrap, pull up, pull up. And I'll stop over here. I want to cut this excess. This will be covered later by the by the dubbing. So keep everything on the top of the hook shank. So I'll keep ribs on the side, keeping them on the side where I need them. And then tail by soft wrap pulling up, I'll keep it on the top of the hook shank. And I'm just going soft wrap up and that's it. Now at this point I can stop, invert the hook in my vise because I want to be able to reach with my dubbing closer to the hook. And I will use green olive dubbing for the body. You don't need much, you need very thin dubbing noodle just to cover the thread. You need it sparse, so I'll just use as little dubbing as possible make it tight so you can go squeeze your finger you can see that they change color into white squeeze your fingers and squeeze the dubbing between them roll it on the on the thread and make dubbing noodle thin this dubbing noodle when it's thin like so is actually very compact it's very difficult to to destroy and the dubbing will never get pulled out so much so if you want something more spiky you definitely need to use a uh, thicker dubbing noodle with softer uh, softer dubbing of, of it, softer applying of the dubbing on the noodle. So here you can see that taper is showing a little bit already and I'll stop over here already. Okay, that's it. Now let me just remove those excess hairs. What Fedran is doing, he would use by it. Uh, he would actually add thorax here and then after adding thorax and getting near the head, he would add one by it, cover the back and they're all whole fly, rib it towards the eye, catch ribs over there and then put two wing case covers from two by it. By it. But I don't think it's super easy for me to do that, at least I tried a couple of times and it doesn't work for me so well, so I'll just go with almost the tip of the feather, by a feather, and you will be able to see very easily. If I'm using this part of the bayet, it's too wide, and as I go with the ribbing along the fly, it will just envelop the whole fly and cover all the dubbing. It will be brown, it won't be double shaded brown on the top and green on the bottom so i want to use lower part or tip part of bayet like so where the taper of the bayet uh, matches the taper of the hook or the fly at this in this instance so it's almost a tip of the bayet counter spin the bobbin holder again make it flat make everything listen to you more so i'll just go like so 
put everything on the top okay this looks good now I want to twist ribs so I want to twist it clockwise if I'm looking from above and now you will actually see why I put it on the far side because when I start wrapping I'll just avoid the tails I want I want this place tails at all so just move buy it match it on the on the top and then I'll do the ribbing in I'm trying to do equal turns and as you can see the reason why they are doing this in kind of opposite way then people would usually put this back cover is to get this more pronounced segmentation so I'll just do the same way they do it tires from Croatia I'll catch well more or less the same way I'll catch everything here you don't need too many wraps because you're going to cover everything again with some dubbing we don't need this anymore and we don't need this anymore you don't need to go super tight to the ribs but yeah that's it now you can see that I have two toned body looks very nice slim now it's time to add this darker dubbing and this time you can add it a little bit thicker but again not too thick because you want to be able to control the taper uh, of thorax so my dubbing noodle will be thin at the beginning relatively thick in the middle and then thin by the end of the dubbing noodle so by, they, by doing so I can actually control my taper a bit more so it's kind of elongated oval shape of the, of the dubbing noodle okay I'll go back here and then make this prominent thorax this should be okay going toward the head now as you can see I don't have much room for the head and everything but that's enough I'll just cover it with thread because I need more control I'll just cut this with my scissors here to make uh, to make Biot lay a little bit more to it like more flat to it it already looks good but the wing case cover will give this fly like a very distinct look and it's once you see this fly you will be always able to recognize it now what I did I took two Biot feathers or barbs whatever yeah it's a barb I think so I, I want this ridge by a ridge to be outwards when I put it on, on the top I want it outwards now again you want to match you want don't want to put these middle portions or like bottom portions of it because it's too wide again for the small fly you need to go low you need to go low with those tips and make like a roof or tent shape here counter spin the bobbin holder again make two loose wraps so it doesn't run away from you okay. okay just tighten towards the top let me see what I did looks right let me see stands good on the top and now here it comes very handy if you have scissors that can actually reach very close to, to everything here now I will do the whip finish knot with wax thread so it doesn't slip sometimes I do it sometimes I don't do it but yeah it definitely helps to have a stronger knot if you're using GSP so try to cover these excess the bias here I wasn't able to cut it super super close but I think this is close enough you can always burn it with lighter now I need to unspin the thread to flatten it more 
it's obviously not flat and flat thread will actually cover this more easily so one two three and let's try to cover it with fourth wrap three is enough but four is okay now to cut the uh, GSP thread make some tension on the hook and just touch the thread with a blade of your scissors if the scissors are sharp it's going to be easy now to cut this you want lower edge of the bayet so this edge over here you want it to be more or less at the half half point of the hook hook shank so here more or less so that's what you need to do and upper has to be at an angle so I just put them together and that's it covering the thorax area more or less the tips are at a half point as you can see here maybe I should have done it a little bit longer but this looks good the whole overall silhouette and that's it so guys thank you very much for watching I hope you like this video I hope you learned something new and I would highly recommend you to, to try this fly because it's really really good ca fish catcher I haven't been using it for some eight years I think now I did some flies in 2015 but then I always like to try new stuff and some some things get forgotten kind of forgotten uh, so that's the reason why I'm tying this one to, to remind myself to make some for me me and to just use them hopefully use them thank you very much for watching and see you next week